Hello everybody, it's Sally here. I am going to um, do a two-page spread in my Dilutions journal and I have been working on the jelly plate for the collaboration with Crafty Michelle. So I had a lot of stuff out. I thought I would just keep going and get a background down using my smaller jelly plates as stamps. So I need a brayer. And I'm going to start with, I have Liquitex Basics in blue-gray, Amsterdam in olive green light, a Liquitex in unbleached titanium, and then I pulled out fluid acrylic in quinacridone, Nicolazo gold, and Payne's gray. So I'm going to just start with the green. I think no rhyme or reason at this point, just getting down a background of colors, just shapes. It's a quick and easy way to just do some fun background shapes. I moved it. That's okay. I put a um, a light coat of white gesso on these pages but I didn't go for full coverage I don't know if you can tell that or not but there's areas that don't have any gesso and then some that do um, I'm not going to clean this I'm just going to put the blue on there and I'm just using my dilutions journaling block to hold this um, jelly plate and I'm gonna just overlap it here hopefully I can get into the center there little hole which I don't want there that's fine Okay, then I'm going to switch to the, I have like a three inch round, I'm just using this lid from a container of soup to hold that one. Then I want some darker. I'm going to go with the Payne's Gray Fluid Acrylic. Again, not I'm not bothering to clean off this plate. It seemed like it went dry in a hurry. what we get. No, that's okay. It's kind of pretty because I have the green still underneath there. I'm just going to go on part of it. I don't want the whole thing this time. Mm -hmm. Let's use 
up what's left on my brayer. Or a lighter print. Maybe I'll go diagonally here. It should be lighter. There wasn't as much paint. Now I will wipe it off. And I'm going to grab the round one again and go with some green. Okay, I'm really sorry you guys. My camera quit and I did not realize it. So you can see here that I just continued on um, stamping shapes with my jelly plates. I added the quinacridone nickel azo gold into the mix and then when it was done I filled in the white spaces with the green color. Okay, <clears throat> the background is all dry that I put down with the jelly plates and then I just kind of filled in whatever white areas there were with some green gold high flow acrylic. Now I've just taken a regular magazine page. You can use any paper. I just grabbed a magazine page and I cut out three silhouette shapes. Cut out whatever shapes that you want. They don't have to be um, like figurative. They could be shapes, you know, more squares or circles or whatever you want to use. I'm going to use this shading gray golden high flow acrylic. It's transparent so I should get some of the color coming through but not as strong. And then underneath where I have my figures it will be the stronger color. So I'm just going to use a cosmetic sponge it's going to be a subtle change in some spots and more dramatic in others depending on which color butts up against the shape. And I'm okay with that. If you wanted it to be really stark against your cutouts then use black or a really dark more opaque color in your background. I use blue painters tape. Just be careful when you take it back off so that you don't tear the paper off your journal page. So I'm feeling like I need this line in there and you see where this coming across is really dark. I may go back in. I'm not sure. Especially maybe just on this shape. I may go back in and lighten that up because that kind of bothers me, that block right there. That was the dark color in the background. So, let's see. I want to establish that line. I'm just going to grab my Stabilo All Pencil and I'm just going to come down where that cutout shape was and come across this one with that gray and just take a baby wipe and kind of activate that a little bit so it doesn't seem like such a stark line in there. That will do just that one line made a really big difference. Um, so let's see, I'm going to grab my green I need my green and my quinacridone. Let's see if we can just take a brush and kind of fix that a little bit. I just have a filbert brush.
All right, well, it didn't make a huge difference there. I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium. I'm going to try and lighten the whole thing up. I don't know, I think that's a little better, actually. You know what, guys, I'm just going to leave it with the with the advice that I gave you a few minutes ago. If you know this is what you're going to do and you're going to be going over top of your jelly colors and dark around your shapes, then stick with the light jelly shapes. Um, and then you don't have to worry about issues like that. Actually, you know what I could do when this is all dry is I could just take this section and collage a piece on top there and put a some words or sentiment or something on there and that'll take care of this issue I mean there's always a fix if it really really bothers you there's always something that you can do to improve it and if there's not then you just paint over it and pretend it was never there all right so then I need to treat this side and I my initial thought was I wanted to just paint a face I might just do part of a face and here again I'm going to be dealing with these two dark spots but with the face most of that if I do it like sort of off the page that will end up underneath my my skin tone layer anyway so that Okay, to start over here, I just took a white charcoal pencil and kind of drew just an outline of where I want my face to be just to give me a point of reference. I'm going to use this stencil. It is from Kaiser Craft and it is called Collage. One of my favorites. And I'm going to just put some more noise in the background here, and I'm going to use Distress Paint and Speckled Egg for this. So we're going to start with the light. Let me grab a dry sponge. Maybe just enough. I just want to break up these big expanses of color and it doesn't matter if I go over my lines for my face I just kind of wanted a general idea of where it was going to be Okay, I'm going to dry this off and I am going to use a little Payne's Gray just here and there just to make bits of the background pop out. I'm going to use the um, Payne's Gray Fluid Acrylic and I'm just going to randomly in some of the lighter spots. Let's see if I like that. It can go a little heavier, I guess. Yeah. I like it. Where's the face? enough so I'm going to dry that and then I will start the face and with the face I'll probably just speed it up because this was really about the jelly plate not everything else and I think you got a good idea of how to do the jelly plate Shapes. I mean, it's really easy, but it makes for a really quick, fun background that you can then just build on in your 
journal or on another piece of paper or whatever, whatever you're working on. I think it would even work if you were going onto a canvas. So give it a try. And I'm going to just work on this face and I'll just speed that right up and you can just watch me. If you feel your paint starting to lift when you're going over it, you know, you need to dry it and then you can do a second coat. Otherwise, you're going to start lifting your paint up. You'll feel it. It'll start getting sticky. Your brush will stick, not glide. And then you start lifting up color rather than putting it down. Okay, I'm going to use a water-soluble graphite pencil to mark in the features. I don't think these two things go together very well, so I decided I'm going to use the Payne's Gray, this dark color, and go all the way around these cutouts, the silhouettes, and then I'm going to do the same stenciling on top of the cutouts, and I think they'll, the page will go together better. Okay, I'm going to call this done. I could keep going and playing and adding and 
I could break out the Posca pan and go around those, which I might do. You'll see if I do, there'll be a still photo at the end of this video. Um, I might do that. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this is all in frame for you. Um, thanks again to Michelle for hosting this three week jelly plate collaboration. Thanks to all the other artists. Um, make sure to go to the description box below and click their links and go watch their, their videos. See what they do with their jelly plates. And in the meantime, you go make some art. Bye.